Welcome to Barbecue Today. I'm your host, Derek Riches, and today we're going to be talking about the features and the operation of the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder DLX Pellet Grill. The Oklahoma Joe Ryder DLX Pellet Grill is a new entry for 2020. This comes from Oklahoma Joe's, which is, of course, a division of Charbroil. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward pellet grill in many ways. You don't get Wi-Fi, you don't get any of the high-tech features, but you do get a wide variety of operation. This pellet grill promises to hold low and slow smoking temperatures, at the same time be able to get up to 650 degree searing temperatures. So let's get inside and take a look at how this thing works. So I've removed most of our internal parts so we can take a look at how this works. We've got our fire pot here, temperature sensor over here. Now this fire pot is slotted. It's got holes through it, which is gonna allow our ashes to drop out. They're collected underneath the grill for uh, easy maintenance. This is a nice feature, something I really like to see in a, in a good pellet grill. Now let's uh, turn it on and see how the fire works. Okay, so the auger is primed, meaning it's now full of pellets. Pellets are falling into our fire pot and coming in contact with the igniter. We're starting to get smoke production. Um, we should have a good fire going here uh, very shortly, but you can see we got a lot of smoke wafting out of here um, and starting to feel the heat just a little bit. Okay, now we're starting to actually get real fire going here. Still got a really good amount of smoke being produced. That'll actually start to die down once this gets burning a little bit faster. We've got good airflow and starting to get a lot of heat coming out of here. Okay, our fire pot is now burning really, really well. Smoke production has come down because we have a high degree of combustion going on. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start shutting this down and we'll put the rest of the components in. Now the fire pot in a pellet grill is small and it uses forced air combustion. A fan is blowing air through the fire pot, which pushes that heat straight up so that we can spread out the heat. We need some sort of deflector. In the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder DLX pellet grill, we have this large metal uh, apparatus in here. Now it's adjustable. We can open it. This is our sear setting. This is our smoke setting. In the smoke setting, the heat's actually being pushed out underneath. So we get an even heat across the surface. In the sear section, the heat is being allowed to shoot upward. And once we have combustion going, this area here is going to be hot, while these areas will be cooler. So when you're thinking about using this for high temperature grilling, this is the area you have to use. Now this whole cooking area is about 580 square inches. And I'll put in the cooking grates here in just a second. So we're gonna fire it up a little bit and see how the fire moves. Okay, so I've got the uh, pellet grill burning away nicely. We've got a good amount of fire coming up in here. Pellets are burning really cleanly, which is one of the reasons why we don't have a lot of smoke production. This is still in our sear uh, position. And you can see the fire raging there. Now if we turn this into our smoke setting, uh, now it's gonna be start distributing that heat. Now, of course, what you're gonna notice is We've still got that fire burning away nicely, but that's not really a very even distribution of heat. So to spread it out a little bit more, we've got this little uh, additional deflector which sits down inside here, and that remains in there the whole time you're, uh, regardless of what kind of cooking you're doing. And it just turns like that to put us back into our smoke position. Now the primary cooking surface is porcelain coated cast iron on here. You get these two side pieces and then there's this removable center section. 
Now the reason for this design is you can remove this section and you can buy additional accessories from Oklahoma Joe's including a um, griddle or a deep dish pan. I'm assuming there's going to be more accessories coming as time goes by. Now this cooking surface is good and heavy so it'll absorb a lot of heat which is good for when you're doing high temperature cooking. Now on the back there are little hooks for these additional cooking racks. There are five slots that they fit into. I can get it in here right. And with both of these sections in place, you have a total cooking area of a little over 1,200 square inches. And since these are adjustable, you can put them where you need them for whatever you're cooking or remove them if you're cooking larger items. Um, so you have plenty of space in here. This is actually a very large uh, pellet grill giving you uh, a lot of area to work with. Now, the body of this pellet grill is not insulated um, and there's no gaskets or anything to hold in smoke. It has two smokestacks on the top, which you spin to close or open. Uh, they get hot, so you have to be careful with that. Uh, but smoke will leak around the door and out through here. So, but that's kind of to be expected in a $650 pellet grill. Okay, so I've preheated this. I've got it in the smoke position. I've set the controller at 250 degrees. Now, let's take a look and see what kind of temperature we're getting on the cooking grates. So on this side, I'm reading about 220. And over here, I'm reading about 330. So, body temperature, the interior body temperature is around 250 degrees. And right at the temperature sensor, I'm reading about 160, of course, with the lid open, temperature drops quickly. So let's move it to the sear function and turn it to high and see if we can hit that 650 degree temperature. I should point out that it's uh, January and the outside temperature is right now around 40 degrees. And according to the Oklahoma Joe's a user manual if you are smoking on cold days they recommend you setting the temperature controller one notch higher than you normally would so they're anticipating that it's not going to hold heat terribly well so while this is uh, trying to reach its maximum temperature let's take a quick look at the controller we have a power button here we have our display here we have our control knob here as you can see this section here is for our smoke cooking. This is for our sear cooking. These are 25 degree increment temperature settings here. And we have a low, medium, and high here. Now, this isn't what we might consider a high precision controller. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We have a time setting here, so we can come in, we can Tell it we want to cook for say two hours or we can use the temperature probe. Now there are two ports here, little silicon caps that go on here. And the unit comes with one pretty standard meat temperature probe. We'll plug it into here. And tell it's reading about 50 degrees, which is eh, pretty much uh, the outside temperature at the moment. There's a little hole through here we can feed our probe in through that way feed it inside and connect it to our meat if you want a second probe well that's sold separately now on these settings they don't really have control over the cooker if I set it for two hours in two hours it's gonna beep that's all it's gonna do it we're not gonna go into a warm mode or anything like that and the same thing with the meat temperature probe. I can set it for the temperature I want. And um, 
when it reaches that temperature, it's gonna beep. Since this is not a Wi-Fi enabled controller, there's no app to it. I'm not gonna get an alert on my phone. It's all pretty straightforward. Now, the power button will simply turn it off. If I push this button while it's running, it's gonna shut down. Uh, not necessarily the most ideal uh, setting that way. If I want it to cool down, then I turn it to this setting here. It's gonna to go to off, and then it's gonna say it's cooling. And I can turn it back, and it'll go to preheat, and continue to run that way. Uh, so you do wanna shut this down before you uh, turn it off. So don't just push the off button, put it into the shutdown mode, let it cool down on its own. The process runs uh, five, seven minutes, something like that. This will burn off all of the pellets that are remaining inside the cooker so they're not left behind in the fire pot to just gain moisture and kind of gum up the works. Uh, personally, I would like a controller that won't just turn off with the push of a button, but uh, it's as long as you remember to put it into the shutdown mode, you'll be fine. So we've had it in sear, had it on high. Oklahoma Joe's tells us it's gonna reach about 650 degrees, that's what's promised. The external body temperature right here is 420 degrees. Our controller, after about 20 minutes, is reading about 590. So let's take a look, see what the temperature on the cooking grates is. Now that temperature will drop pretty fast as soon as I open the lid, so I'm gonna read pretty quickly. I'm reading 570 on that side and about 600 on this side. It does seem to be a lot hotter on one side than the other. And you can see we're getting some ash collection on there. Like I said, it is kind of a colder day. Uh, I'll try again, see how high we can get this maximum temperature. But certainly at 600 degrees, that's gonna give you a good sear. And that fire is raging in there hot and fast. So I, uh, I trust you can get a really good sear on a steak. So one of the problems that pellet grills tend to have, particularly if you live in a humid climate, is if you leave the pellets in the hopper, well, they start to absorb, absorb moisture. And that begins to break them down and that's gonna lead to auger jams. So being able to remove the pellets from the hopper is a, a great function. And most pellet grills these days have that. Well, Oklahoma Joe's has kind of taken that an extra step. This grill comes with this big plastic tub, which holds 20 pounds of wood pellets, slides into this bracket. Now, there's a handle over here. You pull this out, and the pellets start dropping out. So I've got a nice hopper completely full of pellets. I pull out that handle on the side, which is spring-loaded and most of our pellets will drop right out through the bottom. A little bit left behind there. Now, that's actually where the auger is. Let's see if we can get down here and see a little bit better. Those doors sit on either side of where the auger is. So that really clears the pellets out completely. There's two little spring-loaded doors on here. And there's a little bit of a gap on either side of the auger. So uh, one of the strange quirks here is that the small dust from our wood pellets actually tends to kind of fall out through there. I've noticed that in running this unit, I get a little bit of a pile of dust underneath the hopper. Uh, that's not actually a bad thing. It's this fine dust that really absorbs the moisture and can really gum up your auger. So with any luck, this is actually gonna be pr less prone to auger jams 
than a lot of pellet grills. So once you've dumped out your hopper into your bucket, slide that off, pop on the lid, and you've got all your wood pellets stored in an airtight container. So looking underneath the pellet grill, you're gonna notice there are two grease buckets. That big deflector unit that sits inside here kind of divides the space between the two. Any grease that kind of falls on the deflector, that's largely gonna get vaporized. But when you're cooking at low temperatures and that grease begins to accumulate in the bottom of the unit, well, there's a barrier between the two sides. So we have two grease spigots in the bottom and therefore two grease buckets. Now this little cap right here, which is still hot and uh, the manual says, wait for the grill to completely cool down before you remove it, uh, which I'm not gonna do. This is where our ashes collect, theoretically. So I've been running this now for about an hour at various temperatures. Let's see if I can get this off without dropping it. And we'll see it, what kind of ashes we got. You can see, actually, uh, quite a bit of ash in here. So that function seems to work and works quite nicely. Okay, so this has been the Oklahoma Joe's Ryder DLX pellet grill uh, features and operation. You can see that in many ways, it's a pretty simple, straightforward pellet grill, but it has a lot of power and a lot of features to it. Uh, it does a lot that many pellet grills won't do. Uh, I have a video already on unpacking and assembly. I will put a link to it in this video and I will be doing more. So I'm actually gonna be cooking some food next time. So uh, if you wanna see that, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, I will be back and back shortly.